to start here. We'll be uh, starting action here, They're getting ready to start the uh, jump ball. It, it's always though. interesting, the you know, when these first game of the seasons because um, these kids, they haven't had the competition playing against each other, and so, you know, it's fun to watch the the improvement from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. Yeah. They learn a lot through the season. The bullets come in again with uh, two conference wins. They've beat IMS and have beat Columbus. IMS, good, good team IMS has. Uh, Coach Rogers thought they would probably finish second, hopefully second in the conference behind us, and uh, they continue to do well. Andrea Larson uh, gets the tip for the bullets, and we're underway here. And Ashley Hedges brings it up court, gets it outside to Darby Master. Darby tries to really force it inside to Rachel Holstein. l &M knocks it out of bounds. And Master will be bringing it in underneath the basket. She gets it up over some defenders' heads. Holstein back out to Hedges. Hedges dribbles down the right side, gets it back to Masner. They're looking, nice passes by the Bullets. Still trying to force it inside there, and that one didn't work either. LM comes with a uh, comes up with a steal. Too loud, though. I can hear my. S <laughs> that? That? No. So, uh, L and M doesn't score, but Minneapolis comes down the court and puts up two, and that was number 32. Rachel Holstein puts that one in. Turnover by L and M. Traveling. And I can hear you well, Deb. We're, we're having a few technical <laughs> difficulties here. Might be doing some reading the lips. I might be so talking over Kim if I can't hear her. Fine. So uh, blocked pass there, trying to force it to the inside. Not not much height there for L and M, but they are really uh, denying that pass to the inside to both Holstein and. Oh, Holstein nice pass knows. underneath. Right. Andrea Larson puts it in for two. Bullets lead four to zero at 6.34 mark. l &M passing it around the horn there. Number 12, Steer. Steer uh, were called for a foul on Mediapolis. And Deb, that's one thing that has really changed. Uh, the girls have gotten really, really physical. The union is really trying to uh, put the kibosh on that. and. I think it was an 11 or 12 page memo that I got, I know from the union, and that they were really going to start calling a lot more fouls. So I know Coach Rogers said the players, and even himself as a coach is really tentative because you're not really sure what the officials, every night what the officials are gonna call them. Every hand check and everything's supposed to be called as a foul now, so different. Well, but a lot of that, you know, is um, has to do with safety too. Right. As far as keeping the kids safe, and you know what they say, basketball is a non-contact sport. Right, right, <laughs> right. Supposed to be. And I think they want to get it to be as popular as it was a long time ago and, and maybe not as physical, more of a higher scoring game. And definitely Coach Rogers and Coach Hilton have a high scoring team here. But the average right now, I believe, is 74 points per game. Coach Rogers has said that's one thing he's not worried at all about this team is the scoring. It's just more of the defense and what's going to be called. So we have 5.59 left, l &M taking the ball out, gets it underneath the basket. Number 20, uh, Kelsey Bemis tries to put it up, but gets taken away from her by Andrea Larson. Holstein crosses, passes cross court to Masner. Masner pulls up with a jump shot, misses it. Defensive rebound by number 22, Kelsey Chapman. Lexi Ramers, their leading scorer for l &M, brings it up court. I wonder if she has a lot of threes for her scoring, and just, I shouldn't have said that because there she uh, put one in. She must have had her toe on the line, though. That one only went down for two points. Speedy Apples leads four to two. That one tried to pass over a defender. 
And they are, oh boy, that could have been a quick run by LNM to tie it up, but misses the basket. Rachel Holstein has the ball. She tries, or get, does get it over to Abby uh, Eberhardt. Eberhardt takes it back out. Hedges takes a couple dribbles, gonna pull up for the shot, misses it. Offensive rebound by Holstein. Puts it in for the sixth point of the game. Minneapolis leads six to two with 448. Dog cast being brought to you tonight by Deb Coates and Kim Scheitlin. Uh, LNM gets that one and uh, it's four points now, so six to four. Darby Master gets it to Rachel Holstein. Holst, or excuse me, Andrea Larson. She tries banking it in, misses it. But I like what I saw when she followed her shot. I know we would have gotten in a lot of trouble if we didn't follow our shot. That we had drills for that. <laughs> this has been a, a, a pretty even game so far mm -hmm. uh, between the two teams. Not real fast and furious, but it's been, they're thinking out their strategy and they're, they're working it well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and both teams may be trying to feel out the officials a little bit to see what's going to be called. These are different officials than what we've had. Both games, so. Hedges brings the ball up court, passes over to Master on their right-hand side. Back to Holstein at the top of the key, to Master. She takes a look, dribbles in, tries to get it over to uh, Larson in the post, but that's, that's just not working. They might have to go more of an outside game. Because I think they have, doesn't l &M usually have like two or three defenders on uh, Larson right now? Looks like we're playing a zone too. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. It looks like a 2-3. Oh, that was a nice two, steal by Abby Everhart. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Deb. No, it looked like a 2-3 zone, and, and uh, they got in there and intercepted the pass on there. Hedges uh, makes a fake, but when she does, the uh, official thought she moved her pivot foot, calls her for traveling. I'm not so sure about that. Have a timeout by, I'm not sure who. Who? Mediapolis. Okay. Coach Rogers has a uh, vein popping out in his neck right now as he's explaining the He didn't strategy. like that turnover, I don't think. <laughs> so, got to remember, too, you have a start, different starting five out there without Heidi Hilliard, who has played, a, you know, started sophomore year and got a lot of playing time her freshman year. So nobody out there started for the Bullets last year except for one player, and that was Andrea Larson. The others uh, got a lot of playing time, Holstein and, and Master did, but for Ashley Hedges and Abby Everhart, this is kind of new territory. I know they played a lot for JV, but just a, it's, it's a different game. You can see them talking to each other out there, which is good. Yeah. Communication. Falcons pass it around. Raymer's looking for somebody on the inside. She probably wants to take another three, but hasn't decided to do that yet. They get it at top of the free throw line. Back to Raymer. She dribbles in and tries to, but we have a blocked shot there by Mediapolis. Looks like maybe we'll get a fast break here. Hedges takes it, but passes out to Master, who's set and ready to shoot at the three-point line and puts it in for a three. Nine to four. And uh, how many three-pointers has Darby had this season? Three-point goals. She's made four this season, and Ashley Hedges has made four. So. Those oh three-pointers have really... Match going on. <laughs> they've really changed the game a lot. Um, uh, teams that are far behind can catch up quicker. Um, people that, are, that can shoot far out past the line are rewarded for an extra point with an right. extra point and it's just exciting to watch it. Hedges tries about a 15 foot jumper though rolls around and out and again we have three people down on the floor going after the rebound. Coach Rogers calling out the offense there. Darby Master will take it in. Or bring it in underneath the basket. Looks for somebody open. Larson once again they really have that play down. Dump it off to her with that inbound play. That's the second time they 
they made that work, and you would think they would have been ready for that L and M. Save the third time's a charm. A long shot there by number 30, Lauren Hargrave, a junior, a three-pointer. She sinks it, so the score is now 11-7 with the Bullets leading with two minutes left in the first quarter. Master drives it in, uses the bank board, but a little bit too hard. Rebound goes off to l &M. Mediapolis will bring it in. We'll see if they figured it out this time. Okay. Didn't try it. The Bullets didn't try it. I think they time. have that spot covered. Gets it inside to... Uh, uh, Larson, nice assist by Darby Master. Andrea puts it in, and Bullets lead 13 to seven. That height does help under there. It does. For Another, Mediapolis. Uh, two pointer there by 13. That was a nice shot. Madison Stearns, Jr. Mediapolis, a little uh, full court pressure there by LNM. Eberhardt st stepping around the defender, gets the pass to Holstein, back to Hedges, to Massner. She had her, whoop, nice offensive rebound by Rachel Holstein, puts it back up. Well, Mediapolis is ahead by six with a minute left to go in the first period. So uh, that's uh, Lauren Hargrave tries to put up, uh, got an offensive rebound and she was fouled in the act, so she'll get to shoot two. I'd say l &M's hanging in there pretty good for the first quarter. Yeah, it's been a pretty even match so far. She misses the first one. Get a chance to have it uh, be a 50-50 here. Free throws are so important. Free throws can win or lose a game. Yes. Oops, and she missed both of those, but uh, gets the offensive rebound, number 22, Kelsey Chapman, and she's fouled on the rebound. I believe that was by Rachel Holstein. So they'll bring the ball in bounds. Number 10, Ramers will be looking for an open teammate. Holstein comes out, and 14, Allie Mastner comes in. So we have two Mastners out there. So might just say, oh, nice pickoff of the pass there by Abby Eberhardt. She anticipated that one well. Tries to throw it over a defender. Never a good idea. Go around the defender. Masner gets it to Masner. Allie takes a, uh, dribbles the baseline and is fouled. No free throws being shot on this one yet. was downtown for Hedges. She misses it, but kind of extended her range. She didn't miss it by much. Nice so, shot, but yeah. she, yeah, that was a nice shot. They're going to try a three-pointer. LNM is number 11. It says Hillard Lanny. I think it's Lanny Hillard because I wrote about her a lot for t the, during the track season. I think that might be a mistake here. Hedges drives in the lane, gets fouled, so... The basket, I'm sure, is good. We might see an old-fashioned three-point play here. Good time to get those subs in. Free throws. And she makes it a three-point play. That just makes free throw. Bullets lead 18 to nine. So they've doubled their opponent's score. Looking for a fast break cut into the basket there, but lost the handle of it, Ramers did. She's trying to get it to another player, but can't get it. Eberhardt comes up with the loose ball. She's gonna drive, passes over to Allie Master. Master loses the handle on it, and it goes out of bounds. Those are one of those where you go, oh darn. Yeah. <laughs> if I could just have a string on it and pull it back there. So 4.8 seconds, I bet definitely LNM's gonna go for that three-point shot. Roll the ball so the clock doesn't start, get it across the halfway line, have it in Raymer's hand, but Ashley Mockholz takes it away. I think she might have been fouled there when she took it away, but they didn't call it. And we'll let you listen to the school fight song.
Can you hear me better now? <laughs> Not really. Okay, we're ready to uh, start now. After the, between the quarters. All the teams are coming back on the, on the floor. Mediapolis has the ball. And setting up their offense. Hedges passes to Eberhardt. Eberhardt drives down the right-hand side, loses the handle of it, gets it back. I'm not sure why that wasn't a double dribble. Gets it to Hedges. Hedges has a nice pass into Larson. Larson puts it up, misses it, gets her own rebound, puts it back up strong. I think l and is uh, coming out a little bit more aggressive this uh, second quarter. Have another uh, three-point play here, maybe. Nope, she misses that one. Rebound by l and &M. Ramers take the ball down the court. Ramers only a junior, looking for somebody to try to pass it over the defender, and she gets it there, but Allison Steer passes, and they put it up, misses it. Abby Everhart comes up with the defensive rebound. Massner trying to get it across the line, gets it to Hedges. Hedges has a nice pass, inbounds to Larson, and Larson puts it up for two. Mediapolis is working really well under the, uh, underneath the basket inside tonight. Nice passes. So L&M dribbles down the uh, left-hand side. She's kind of stuck over there. Raymer just can't find another person. Tries going over Master. That never works. Holstein loses the uh, handle on that one. Raymer picks it up. Tries driving left-hand layup. Misses it. They're looking for another shot. Holstein, oh, nice steal there was by a nice steal. Really, she anticipated that one well. So pass it inside. Oh, nice try by Ashley Hedges. That was always one of my favorite shots when we played horse. Yeah, I know it. Enter the basket with a hook. Come around. There you go. Yeah. And uh, she got fouled doing it, so Ashley's at the line. That makes... I think it says five team fouls for l &M, but I think it's been stuck on five for a long time. It looks like we're in the, or they're in the bonus, so it'd have to be at least seven, I would think. She makes the first one. Got the rebound there. Hedges misses the second one. 23 to nine lead. And again, you're listening to Kim Scheitlin and uh, Deb Coates tonight bringing you the dog cast. Mediapolis Bullets and Bulldogs against l &M Falcons. Master goes for the pass with uh, number 20. They're trying to get inside to Kelsey Bemis and she fouls her. Coach Rogers shouting out some instructions yet. 14 point lead for the Bullets. Clear over the top to number 12, Allison Steer. Hargraves in the middle, puts it up, and scores. Hart brings it down, gets it to Master. At Hedges is going to try a That was a pretty shot. Top of the key, makes it. And l &M calls timeout. With only 5.52 here left until the half. At halftime, I think we uh, we have Heather Anderson sitting in front of us, the pre-K through sixth grade physical education teacher, and she's going to talk to us about the Jump for Heart fundraiser that the kids had for the American Heart Association. This would be a good time, I guess, to run through the sponsors. I was just Can't thinking that. that. <laughs> These are the people bringing you the dog cast. That's right. They want to thank these people. Um, MTC Technologies, sign up for MTC's Cable Channel 10 and watch Mediapolis Games. McLaughlin Freight, for all of your trucking and freight services, call Boone McLaughlin. Main Street Tire, at Main Street Tire, your tires and safety are number one and not just an afterthought. 
Mediapolis Savings Bank, supporters of Mediapolis schools and the Mediapolis community. Mediapolis Boosters, get involved in or contribute to Mepo Sports. Call Dan Work to become a booster. Federal Mogul, DMC Mutual and the Elin Agency, USG, Brewer Agency, Hawkeye Pettershaw. And we'll bring you more the next time out because it's already time to for action. Lake Mills has the ball. And that gets it to Hargrave. She's at the top of the key there at the free throw line. Puts it up, but it bounces back. It's the back rim. Holstein brings it up, gets it to Hedges. Hedges back to Holstein. She's going to try a three-pointer. This is it. Rolls off. Nice offensive rebound. Oh. Well, it seems like they're fighting for the rebounds better. I noticed that was one thing they didn't do as well at Columbus Junction. Maybe a tentative. And uh, Coach Rogers said that was something he was hoping they'd work on. So obviously worked on that Wednesday and Thursday. Darby Master brings it inbounds to Holstein. Over to Eberhardt. She gets it inside the lane to Holstein. Turns around, misses it. Larson there for the offensive rebound. Puts it up and is fouled. It's hard not to foul when you're under that basket. You know, uh, they say keep your arms up. Don't go for the ball, but... Any, right any body contact or, you know, movement of the wrist or arm, you know, out of that perpendicular, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's hard not to foul under the basket. Larson puts it in. Allie Master comes in and I believe Darby Master takes the seat. So sister for sister switch there. Larson makes the second one. Let's see what defense they go to. Uh, looks like they're in a zone again. They were in a man-to-man -man before. Oh, I, I heard a they're slap of the wrist clear up here. Yeah, That's with headphones on. I'm trying to tally up some points here so we can uh, see. Ball's getting wet for the bullets. have number 20, Kelsey Bemis at the line. This is that one. Yeah. Makes the second one. She's making a 28. Or did she, did she miss, make the first one too? She made both of them. Uh, well, I missed must. that. That's 28 to 13. You're multitasking. That's I am. All. I'm trying to add up. There was a three-point shot by Mediapolis and missed and rebounded by Mediapolis. Two-point shot, missed, and out of bounds to LM. Four forty-six left in the second quarter, and it Mediapolis twenty-eight and L and M thirteen. So right now, I have Rachel Holstein with six points, Ashley Hedges with seven, Darby Master with three, and Andrea Larson in double figures with twelve. So Boy Reamers was just went cut right through the defense, right hand layup and missed it. She'd be shooting a hundred layups at practice probably. Our days. Master goes to put it up, loses the uh, handle on the ball. Ramers brings it up court for the Falcons. We have a little over half left in this first half. Four, or in this quarter, I should say, four minutes left. She puts it up. We have a foul on the rebound, I believe, by Abby Everhart. I think fouls are really starting to pile up for both teams. Or did they call it on S? It's on number 14. Who's 14? Who? 14? 14 for Mediapolis. Oh, Allie Master. Yeah. Okay. Darby Master checks in for Rachel Holstein. It's one on one. So L&M in the bonus. Three more, they'll be shooting two. Hopefully we won't see that happen before the half's over. l and getting some substitutes in. Number 11, Lanny Hilliard comes in for uh, Lauren Hargrave. 
and it's, I think it's Hillard. Hillard, what I say. She, I've typed up her name a lot for junior high track. She's a really good athlete. It'll be interesting to see what she does in high school. Ashley Hedges gets in the uh, lane for that defensive rebound and gets fouled. And only two ticks have gone off the clock in, I think, the last minute or two. The pace of the game has slowed down considerably. Yes, it has. The uh, foul count has gone up, and the time has. Yeah, gone when up you slowly. when they have to show uh, shoot free throws, you know, on fouls, it takes a lot more time. Hedges makes the first one. This game seems like it's been a lot closer than what the score has sh is showing right now. Um, Another as far as the type of play. Hedges. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Deb. Raymer's uh, it looked like a pass, but it wasn't. She lost the hold of it. Steer picks it up. Back to Raymer's. She's going to put one up from inside the three-point line, but doesn't touch anything. Hargrave gets the rebound. They're going to get it back into the lane by number 20, Kelsey Bemis, but just can't get it. But the Bullets come up with that rebound. Up court pass to Darby Massner. She gets it to Larson. Larson makes a move. Pulls up for a jumper. Misses it. And uh, number 20, Kelsey Bemis had the rebound. And the Andrea Larson ties up the ball, but possession arrow goes LM's way. Ramers brings the ball up court for the Falcons. Passes off to Hiller. Hiller back to Raymer. Oh. Raymer's, there, some of her teammates were pointing to somebody, but she was concentrating on her dribble, missed it. And uh, they try a little uh, feed there, but missed it. And Andrea Larson comes up with the defensive rebound. She's going to get it to a ball handler to bring it up the court. Not that well, now she we got a full court it. press going on here. So we can have even more fouls. <laughs> oh, nice. Now that was a thread the needle pass if I ever saw one. Nice assist there, and Larson puts it in for two more points. She has 14 right now. Very uh, selfless team. They really will give it up the, the pat. They'll take the assist over the points. It's nice to see. Uh, Larson tried to block that one. Uh, Got a piece of something there, maybe the arm. Kelsey Bemis was fouled, so she'll go to the line, shoot two. Bullets lead 32 to 13. We want to thank you for joining us tonight, the Dogcast. If you'd like to tell us where you're listening from, just shoot us an email to dogcast at meepotelco.net. This is Kim Scheitlin joined with uh, Minneapolis Bullets standout back in the good old six on six days, Deb Coates. And she's an old hand at this. She did this last year, so. It's hard to believe a year's gone by already. Oh. LNM makes one at the line. And I think we're still going to see that full court pressure by the Falcons. It's surprising because, I mean, Minneapolis has shown they're uh, good ball handlers. I'm surprised we're going to do the full court pressure, but. They easily get the ball across the line. Head just passes to Larson. She's going to pull up outside the lane and puts it in for two more points. Nice look in the basket there by Andrea Larson. 16 points this half of the Bullets 34. She has almost half the points. Well, with those good, uh, with that full court press and those quick passes, it's given them nice open shots down at the basket. A fast break going. Uh, Darby Master put up a left-handed layup. It's good, and Minneapolis leads 36 to 14. Fifth point for Massner this half. Hedges, is, uh, she's going to get called for a foul there pretty soon. They're just watching that too closely there, Ashley. Ramers puts up a left-handed layup, misses it. Kind of hit way high up on the bank board there. She's going to try again. And this time she pulls up on the baseline jumper, makes it. Full court pressure. Master, uh, Darby Master, that is, to Rachel Holstein. Hedges gets it across the line, passes to Andrea Larson. Larson had an open alley uh, Master underneath the basket there. She took the shot instead. Bullets with the offensive rebound. And maybe I thought she just looked open, more open. Master 
Darby that is, puts up a three-point attempt, misses it. Oh, really high dribble there by uh, l and &M. She drew the foul. She, I thought she was gonna get called for the dribble. But. Yeah. So number 21, Caitlin Golden Fennig or something like that. Is that the line? She misses it. That's that name we were dreading, Deb. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not sure. We'll just call her Caitlin. Golden Fenning. Okay. How about good. Caitlin G? Caitlin G. There you go. Caitlin G puts in the second one. Bullets lead 36 to 17 with 1 1 1 left in the second quarter. Eberhardt looking for somebody open, gets it to Hedges. Three pointer up and good for Ashley. So How many three pointers leads. is that? Uh, we've had three. Three, it seems like Hedges more has net. had two and Master had one. Hedges dribbling, get the ball up court. She gets it to Eberhardt. Cross court pass to Allie Master. Allie misses. Baseline shot there. Back to Ramers. Ramers brings it up. And they're going to call Hedges for a blocking foul. It stops the clock at 34 seconds. I'm not sure who ran into who there, but with them both moving, the foul gets called on Hedges. Ramers at the line, makes the first one. She had nice form on that shot. She does. I can see why she's their leading scorer. Uh -huh. And the second one's good as well. So Ramers makes a pair of free throws. Andrea Larson comes out, and I believe it was Ashlyn Lockholz comes in. Let's see how the four-court pressure goes now. Darby Master gets it into Hedges. Hedges back to Master. Eberhart, get it across the line. Back to Master, and there we're across the line. Gets it to Hedges. She's going to take another look at that three pointer. And she thinks that one as well. You hear her mom cheering in the background there. Ball out of bounds with 11.1 seconds left on the clock. You know those girls shooting that three-point shot? They uh, they I'm just sorry. they what? just concentrate and they are zoned and yes. they're hitting them. Why do you call a timeout when you're behind by 23 points and there's 11 seconds left on the clock? Because he had one to use. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Can't take him into the locker room. That's, That's a right. Good answer. Can't bring him good back. Answer. Okay. I thought maybe it was trying to get some other players in, but I don't see anybody changed in the lineup either. Um, well, maybe he wants to uh, try a play that they've been practicing. Okay. In practice. Oh, okay. We'll see. Sounds good. Steer looks for an open player, gets it into uh, Hiller. And now we're drives and a baseline shot. Tries to bank it in, misses it. Offensive rebound, two of them there by l &M. They miss the first one. Second one goes up and uh, Golden Fennig is fouled. She will go to the line. That was a foul on number 14, I believe. And I think that's Allie Master. That might be her second one. Usually it comes up on the, uh, yep, two on her. She puts the first one in. Yeah, it looked like they were trying to run some kind of special play. Um, Must have had that one drawn up. They got a couple of good shots off of it, okay. but um, she got fouled on the third rebound. So, so Mediapolis leads 42 to 20, and they're going to take that lead into half.
tonight. Andrea Larson puts it up, gets her own rebound, turns around and puts that one in for two points. That's uh, 18 points now for Larson. Look to see if uh, like uh, L and M is doing, going to be doing anything a little different. Um, I think a lot of the problem is that the height difference uh, between the teams. They almost have to be more physical. They can, they just don't have that height advantage. That's right. So L and M set to bring the ball in bounds. Uh, number 12 puts it up the free throw line. That was Steer misses it. Offensive rebound by Aber Abby Eberhardt. She keeps the ball. Had a few players trying to get it for her. I thought maybe she took a step there trying to get it to a, her teammates, but not called. Hedges passes it to where she thought uh, Eberhardt would be. But uh, I thought we were going to have an over and back call, but LNM grabs the ball instead and slides out of bounds for a traveling call. I don't know why didn't yeah, that one go. Yeah, she should have just let it go. Not sure of the rules there because if Mediapolis would have picked it up, it would have been a turnover. If it would have gone out of bounds, it was off of Mediapolis, still would have been a turnover. Well, they they just intercepted the ball and they're bringing it down, so uh, LM gets a chance to um, get two or three points off of this. Reamers takes a look, dribbles, decides not to, passes it back to Steer. Steer dribbles in, and she's going to take a shot. Rolls in and out, and Holstein offensive, and uh, Steer's right there to foul her, but saw a little pushing action maybe on Holstein's side too, but the foul's called on Steer. That is her second foul. Ball to Hedges, still four court, full court. Cross there, or half court anyway, by LNM. Nice. No, I will say that uh, when they started that full court press, we were we were beating it, and now it's starting to work for them. Yeah. So foul called on Mediapolis, I believe. I'm not sure uh, what happened there, but get the ball back to LNM. Got several turnovers. Really not much scoring here in the third quarter yet. Larson gets a piece of that one when Steer put it up on the baseline for a block. And Mediapolis gets the ball. Eberhardt will bring it up court. Gets it to Darby Master. Master passes over to Holstein. Holstein drives the baseline. Passes back out to Master. Tries to get it inside to Larson. But uh, Steer got a hand on it. And LNM gets a turnover. Just kind of sloppy play on both sides of the yeah, that right now. Yeah, it has been, yeah. So have a player down to Mastner, over to Eberhardt. Eberhardt's going to try uh, inside the three-point line, misses it, rolls out. Offensive rebound by Larson. She puts it back in for two points. Well, let's lead 46 to 20. I believe Coach Rogers wants to talk to the girls. It hasn't that uh, Lake uh, uh, L and M. They've been um, getting some good shots. They've just been just been missing them. Right, and like you said, they have good form when they put mm -hmm. up the ball too. So we'll go through some of the sponsors bringing you the doghouse. Uh, fast break, Morning Sun Farm Implement, Riot Electric, McLaughlin Oil, Meepo Foods, Everhart Construction. Lane Plumbing and Heating, Pixels PC. Great River Medical Center, Prairie Ridge Care and Rehab, Creative Visions, Agroway Partners, SG Construction. Standard of Beaverdale, Two Rivers Bank and Trust, Deb Massner Real Estate, Hawkeye Pedershop, Brewer Agency, USG, DMC Mutual, and the Lee Eland Agency. I'm sorry, and where I'm holding it, you probably the light's shining on it for you and it's hard for you to read. Sorry about that. I want so, to thank the, the supporters again of the Dogcast uh, and uh, Mediapolis Sports. Really good support for that. Ball goes off of Holstein's foot. She goes to grab it. Come back in. l and will bring it in bounds again. At 5.26 left in the third quarter. St uh, number 21, Golden Finnick gives the ball into Steer. Steer over to Chapman. Oh, 
don't think Raymer's in the game right now. They're leaning score. Tries to pass over a defender. Never a good idea. Mediapolis picks the ball off. Holstein back to Massner. Massner over to Eberhardt. Gets it to Hedges on the outside. Nice inside pass there by Hedges to Larson. But she has, I think, the whole LM team guarding her. Then got it to Holstein. The official furthest away from the action blew the whistle. Calls the foul. <laughs> Massner will bring in it bounds. You think we'll see that play where Larson goes right underneath and gets a quick two? Well, they've had that covered uh, the last three or four times, oh, but there they tried go. it again and they got it. They didn't have under the basket covered, and so Mediapolis got another two points, quick two points. 22 for Larson now for this game. And, uh, Hedges is also in double figures with 15. Master has five, and Rachel Holstein has six. And back and forth, the ball left. Hedges has the ball over to Everhart to Massner. Cross guard up there to Hedges. She's going to try the long three pointer, and she hasn't missed her touch there. They make it look easy. She has played a lot of ball, a lot of summer ball. Uh, I think they're probably going to Ames this weekend, as a lot of these players have. I mean, what they put into the basketball. I thought we played a lot when we played here, but. Uh, I know some of them, they go during the week, one night a week, to Ames to practice. And That's then a long a ways to drive. On the weekends. A uh, lot of uh, game. And, and you see that same thing for, for volleyball. And I know a lot of them play club baseball and so ASA softball. And wow. Well, you know, it, it takes uh, some dedication um, outside of school time and outside of organized practice for these kids to improve. I just can't imagine going to Ames in the middle of the week and then having to come home the next day. I mean, driving that far as a parent, so and give the parents a lot of credit too. I mean, well, do they the, do they play games there or do they? Sometimes uh, I think it's maybe just to meet with a uh, somebody to play up there, but it's for their practices. Uh, lots of times for the uh, uh, teams that they play on, like I, some of the girls play for the Iowa Tech. Well, some of the year, younger girls, Coach Rogers' daughter uh, Mackenzie, plays for the Iowa. I think it's called the Barnstormers, which oh, he helps okay. coach. So for him, a lot, coaching here and then coaching somewhere else, too. It's just, wow. They're getting a lot of different takes on the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> L&M player goes to the floor. Hedges passes to Holstein. Holstein drives in the lane, tries to put it up. Misses just hits the front rim. Goes out of bounds. So l and will get a chance for some points. Mediapolis leads 51 to 20. Not to be too optimistic, but I'm guessing Coach Rogers is going to wrap up his 300th win tonight with a 31-point lead. They would have to score more in the almost one quarter than what they have the two and a half quarters of the game. I realize anything's possible with that three-point shot. That's true, but it, it does look promising, and uh, I hope it happens. That's, that, that's a big accomplishment. That is a good, big accomplishment. Darby Master goes for a steal there. Gets called for a foul. Must have gotten the body. Looked pretty clean from here, but I'm not on the court. Number 13 gets the ball. Sturms tries to get it inside to Hargrave. L&M gets it back. Ramers had a rest on the bench, and she got some uh, rejuvenated. She puts up a three, and it's good. I just dribbling, looking for some... Uh, Opening offense, passes to Eberhardt. Eberhardt looks inside, gets it back to Hedges. So Master goes around an L&M defender. Actually between two, between Ramers and Hillard. One of them get called for the foul. I'm not exactly sure who. And I might try to really multitask here in a second, Deb. I might try to take some pictures. So I might let you do some of the action. Oh, three-pointer by Darby Master. Okay, I'll try to try to do it with, without your help. 
Oh. You know the kids very well. It helps to teach here. <laughs> yeah. So Minneapolis brings the ball down the floor and the jump shot in the lane is missed and the rebound and a foul on L&M. And they used to put them up here and now they don't. They put it on the side, but it used to show under there and you would know how many fouls and who the foul was and the on. Yeah, and the names, not there just anymore. the numbers, yeah. Allie Masner is shooting. Now all the subs are coming in for Mediapolis and L&M. Allie goes to shoot again and misses that one, but it's rebounded. Oh, there's a pile and there's a jump ball, which goes to. Mediapolis has the ball, throws it in. Passing around the perimeter and throws under and Andrea Larson makes the basket and is fouled and she is shooting the free throw. And now we have some more subs come in for l and &M. I'll try to fill it a little bit here too. <laughs> There's, uh, if we had a stand, I could talk and take pictures at the same time, but I don't have a stand. <laughs> hey, she makes that one, so it's a real... My 220 left to go in the third quarter. Well, L&M brings the ball down. Passing around the perimeter out front. Minneapolis is in a zone right now. And they're trying to find a hole in the zone. They're passing it around. Minneapolis defense is doing really well. And they pass it underneath and there's a foul. I surely and got a few pictures there. I will tell you again. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. L&M, I hope the, f the people listening out there can understand what I'm saying. They missed the, L&M is shooting the free throw and they missed the first free throw. 20, is it Kelsey Demas? The only senior out there. I, th I think she's the only senior on the whole roster as we only have one senior too. That's interesting. Rachel Holstein comes up with the offensive rebound, gives it to Hedges. Hedges back over to Darby Massner. Massner's gonna take another. Look at that three point. She's already had two tonight, misses that one. Hargrave picks up the rebound for l and It's t knocked out of bounds from behind by Ashley Hedges, so they'll have to bring it in. It's not too often that these girls bringing the ball down the floor are aware of who's behind them, but, but that uh, L&M girl knew, yeah. knew who was behind her. <laughs> oh, three-pointer by Ramers, and boy, that one was good. If she gets the chance, she really can make them. But when you have a defender in your face all night, it's probably pretty hard to do that. Mediapolis leads 58 to 26. So Ashley Mockholz gets the ball, passes over to Allie Master. Master dribbles into the lane, puts it up, misses it. Stern brings down the, uh, or excuse me, Steer brings down the rebound for L&M. Ramers has the ball. She's only a junior, so she'll see lots of playing time next year too, I would assume. Trying to get the ball inside to uh, Bemis, but as they're tossing it around, l and throws it out of bounds for a turnover, and Ashley Mockholz will bring the ball in for Mediapolis. Timeout, I believe, by Coach Rogers with 32.3 seconds left. Maybe he wants a play that it wants to try for the end of the, the quarter. So... Uh, be nice if I could get some of these other kids to talk to me. Oh, those are sitting here. I'll see. Deborah, how much money did you raise for Jump Rope for Heart? $75. Wow, $75. So that was Deborah Brown, and you're a fifth grader this year, right? Yes. So, 
Did you? I know. I talked to Natalie earlier, Natalie Miller, and she had a website. How did you go about raising your money? Just ask grandparents and stuff? My parents took it to work for, to raise for, to raise money, and then my, all my family. Hey, that was a good idea. Good idea. Well, congratulations. Did your brother raise that much, too? Awesome. Okay. I think Liz is hiding from me, Natalie. So Ashley Hedges, wow, what a move. Takes it all the way and puts it up. She has a really she outstanding game. She did a razzle-dazzle dribble play there. That's 20 points for Hedges. So sophomore, exciting. So uh, Raymer, Five they, seconds they have left. to shoot the ball. Don't. Now 1.4 seconds left on the clock. Foul was on uh, Ashley. Was it? Mm -hmm. Okay. She's number 10. Was that, It says that's her first foul. I don't, maybe they just don't have it up there yet. No, she's number 42. Oh, was it Ashley Mockholz? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Didn't miss that one. 60 to 26. Lots of names on the... Uh, that have A's. So it's 60 to 26 right now. We'll let you listen to the fight song by the Minneapolis band. On Wisconsin. Good to listen to the band. And I say so much more enjoyable music than what we heard the other night. I don't know if they were, they just were rapping on the outside of the drums at Columbus Junction and it was so loud. So, and really not much music. So this is good to hear. I mean, I mean I'm sure it was fine. They were keeping the beat well, but I'd rather hear some music. Looks like the gym's starting to fill up a little more with uh, more people. The little kiddos going out there, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lim well, throws the ball away, and uh, Mediapolis is going to take it out and see if they can increase their lead. That quarter was kind of even scoring there. Mediapolis scored 18 points, but LM had 15, so that I had, but I think I added wrong somewhere. Yes, I did. Well, that second quarter, that was uh, LM kind of, kind of, I don't know what happened. They kind of slowed down, so the whole game's been good. Like I said, the score hasn't really indicated anything. It's been a good game. LM drives in, number or 11 Hiller. She tries to get it up there. Offensive rebound, but number 20, Bemis gets called for traveling because she was laying on the ground with the ball. Ramers comes out. Holstein will inbound the ball for Mediapolis, gets it to Hedges. Still have the uh, full court pressure there by LNM. Gets it across the line. Hed uh, Everhart does, but takes a step as she's doing it, so a turnover on Mediapolis' part. 21, Caitlin Goldenbenig from LNM inbound the ball. I hope she doesn't have a brother. <laughs> I was just thinking <laughs> the same thing. You get it inside to Bemis. Bemis turns around. They're called for traveling again. She thinks she was fouled. She's at the line ready to shoot her free throws. Doesn't realize that she got called for traveling. I think she's got it figured out now. Oh, 
Oh. Uh, Master picks up an errant pass on LNM, puts it up, but doesn't fall in, so LNM will bring the ball up court. Steer has the ball, looking for Hillard. Hillard gets it inside to Hargrave. Hargra well, Hargrave's going to get it inside to Bemis. This time she turns around, puts it in, and it's good. So first points of this quarter go to Actually, we must have scored somewhere, and I missed a basket along the way, didn't I? They have 20.8 points on the scoreboard for Larson, and I had 26, so I bet that's what I missed. Darby Masner puts the first free throw in. She has nine points tonight. Puts the second one in as well, so she's in double figures, as well as Ashley Hedges and Andrea Larson. These l and players are not quitters, and they're going, they're taking the ball right to Mediapolis. Um, uh, they lost it underneath there. Mediapolis is bringing the ball down the floor, but they get it right back, and they're... Larson puts it up strong. I, I can't believe there wasn't a foul there, but there wasn't. So they're letting them play here. Hargrave puts it up way outside the three-point. It almost looked this like a desperation it. shot. Larson pulls down the rebound with authority there. Gets it to Darby Master, to Hedges. Hedges, I think, took a step there and traveled as she was going to dribble. 4.59 mark, we have a timeout. I believe Coach Rogers called that one. He's going to have a full timeout so the girls can take a break there. Mediapolis leads 64 to 28. We'll run through the sponsors. These are the people bringing you the Dogcast for girls, boys, basketball, and wrestling this season. MTC Technologies, McLaughlin Freight, Main Street Tire, Mediapolis Savings Bank, Mediapolis Boosters, Federal Mogul, DMC Mutual, and the Eland Agency. USG, Brewer Agency, Hawkeye Pedersheb, Shab, excuse me. Dead Master Real Estate, Two Rivers Bank and Trust. Standard of Beaverdale, SG Construction, Agriway Partners, Creative Visions, Great River Medical Center. Prairie Ridge Care and Rehab, Myers Construction, Fast Break, Morning Sun Farm Implement, and we'll bring you the rest during the next time out. LM has the ball, has a turnover. Dabby, Darby Master. And Mediapolis uh, gets the ball baseball. from Lake. From LM and long cross court pass, three point shot, missed. Mediapolis rebounds, puts the ball up, and LM gets the rebound and is bringing the ball down, slowing the pace a little bit now. Hargrave looks to working drive. the ball. Gets the ball to Hillard, Hillard back to Bemis. Yeah. Stripped away the dribble there by Hedges. She goes the full length of the court, puts it up for two. Makes a hard left hand layup. Hargrave puts up another one of those desperation shots outside the three point range. Misses it, rebound by Bullet. Hedges throws it up court to Masner. Master looks inside, but uh, Larson well guarded by Bemis and Hillard. Now Holstein could get it inside to her, a different angle. Larson turns around, puts it in for two. Nice assist by Rachel. And that's uh, Andrea's 30th point of the game there. So another good night for her. Good offensive showing for the Bullets tonight. Yeah, that last play was a excellent uh, post, post uh, work underneath there. And with the steal, with the fast break, that was good too, so. Rachel Holstein puts that one in. She has eight points for tonight, another two. She'll be in double figures. Larson comes around and uh, gets the steal, and as she's bringing the ball up court, she's scored by Lanny Hillard of l and So 
Hedges comes and takes a seat on the bench. 22 points for the night. We have Haley T checking in for the Bullets. Savannah Keitzer, so getting some uh, substitutes in. Coach Rogers is. We have two masters in there, Larson, and the other two that I just mentioned. Number 22 puts the ball up. That's Kelsey Chapman. Pulls it down. They're going to try it again. LNM. Hark, uh, excuse me. Bemis puts it up, banks it in for two. Score is 70 to 30. Here. Listening to the dog cast, this is Kim Scheitlin joined by Deb Coates tonight. Bullets and Bulldogs facing LM. I would say this one is not in the books yet, but Bullets have a 70 to 30 lead with 241 mark. So it's going in the books soon, and this will be Coach Todd Rogers' 300th win. So exciting night for him tonight. So still some things maybe to work. Those seniors that leave, you need to have some, some experienced players that are ready to, to step up to the plate. And luckily for Mediapolis, they only lose one senior. And, and without Heidi Hilliard tonight, uh, really they've played well without one of their scoring weapons and defensive weapons. Heidi's hands are all over the place. She's always stealing the ball. With anticipation too, because there was a couple of steals down here by her. So, rebound there by number 22, Kelsey Chapman. So have a foul on, I believe, maybe Ashley mock -Holtz. Not sure. The girls that you were looking at their numbers trying to figure out who the foul's on. I think that was called on Haley T. T, a sophomore who uh, didn't play basketball last year, but decided to go back out this year. She might remember her name. for She uh, went, has gone to state for the last two years for cross country. So she was definitely in shape to be running up and down the court. Continuous clock, too. I forgot about that. We're over 35 points, so continuous clock's in effect. We, we like that a lot. I know the coaches sometimes don't like it because they can't get the subs in as well, but if you're on the winning side of it, I don't think that you could hate it. And really, if you're on the losing side of it, you're probably glad when it goes in effect, too. Um, hopefully yeah, especially when you know there's no chance, of, yeah. no chance of winning. So we have a quick whistle. Boy, they're calling it. I'm surprised we haven't had people fouling out, actually. But uh, that one was on Ashley Mockholz. That's her, I think, third foul of the game, and she's probably only played, uh, what, four minutes of the game? Yeah, not very long. So actually, it puts four fouls for her up there. Your niece is in there now? Yes, my niece, Katie. She's playing. Gonna go watch my other two nieces tomorrow play. In Burlington. Okay, that yes. would be uh, Allie Sarah and Allie. Allie. Okay. Sarah and Allie. Oops. Oh, no one was watching pass. for that Nobody pass. watching for it. Katie goes for the ball, but I think she's going to get called for a foul there. She's like, what, me? I don't see her parents here tonight. Are they here? Or did somebody else have a ball game? No, they... they uh, they're busy tonight with some other stuff. That that's what happens when you have a big family. You've got so many things going on, and mm -hmm. and uh, you can't you can't get everybody. L and M getting a lot of offensive rebounds here. I think the girls are scared to block out. Scared they'll foul. Hargrave or not? It's not Hargrave. I'm not even sure. Uh, Sydney Wagner puts that one up. I, it says Wagner Sydney, but I'm guessing it's Sydney Wagner. I think they've have that one messed up. Some of these players aren't even listed on the ones that have stats, so maybe this is the first time they've been in the game as well. 70 to 32 lead for the Bullets. Less than a minute left to go. John Aladdy tries to get her name in the book, puts it up, misses it. I think uh, Coates was fouled there, but didn't get called. They'll put it up. Just kind of letting them play here for the last few minutes, seconds of the game. Let them shoot. Don't foul. <laughs> Not now. Just let the time go off the clock. Well, that was a good save. Was. So. Oh, I think he, uh, referee was going to call a foul there, but the buzzer went. And we'll listen to the school song by the Minneapolis band. 